This is the Erexel GCSE 9 to 1 Maths Paper 1 from the higher tier and it's from the November 2021 series. Question number 1. For part A, we have to work out 3.67 multiplied by 4.2. There are various methods to work out this calculation. One possible method is the grid method. So if we construct a grid as we see here, we've got 3.67 and 4.2. And if we multiply, 3 times by 4 is 12. 0 0.6 multiplied by 4 is 2.4. 0.07 multiplied by 4 is 0 0.28. 3 multiplied by 0 0.2 is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.2 is 0 0.12 and 0 0.2. 07 multiplied by 0 0.2 that's equal to 0 0.014 and at this point we need to add together these numbers so we need to add together the 12 the 2.4 the 0.28, the 0.6, the 0.12, and the 0.014, and if we add all these together, we've got the 0 0.004, then we've got the 0 0.08 plus the 0 0.02 and the 0 0.01. Well, here we've got 8 plus 2 plus another one, which is 11, and then we carry one forward here and we've got the digits 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 plus 0 added together so we've got 5 7 13 14 and then we carry the 1 here then we've got 1 2 3 4 5 and then we've got the 1 over here and so the result of the calculation, 3.67 multiplied by 4.2, that's 15.414. Now for part B of the question, we have to work out 59.84 divided by 1.6. So far, we've got 59.84. 84 divided by 1.6 and what this is the same as if I multiply top and bottom by 100 this is the same as 5984 divided by 160 now let's see if we can work this out. We can divide the top and bottom by 2. So if I do 5984 divided by 2, that's 2992 divided by 80. And we can divide by 2 again. And if I do that, we end up with 
96 divided by 40. And if I divide by 2 again, we end up with 748 divided by 20. And if I divide by 2 again, we have 374 divided by 10. And what this is the same as is 3.74. Rather, 37. Point four. So we end up with 37.4. Question number two. We've got a set of even numbers less than 19. A, we've got 6, 12 and 18. And B, we've got 2, 6, 14 and 18. And we have to complete the Venn diagram for this information. Well, here are the even numbers, less than 19, 2, 4, 6, etc., up to 18. Now, with what's common to both, we have the 6, which is common to both, and we also have the 18, which is common to both. And in A only, we've got 12. And in B only, we've got 2 and 14. Now let's cross off the numbers which have already been used. The 2 has been used. 4 hasn't been used yet. 6 has been used. 8 hasn't been used. Neither has 10. 12 has been used. 14 has been used, 16 hasn't been used, 18 has been used. So the numbers which do not belong in A and B, we've got 4, 8, 10 and 16. Question number three. We have to work out four and one fifth, subtract two and two thirds. Let's convert these into mixed numbers to begin with. We've got four multiplied by five plus the one divided by five, subtract two multiplied by the three plus the 2 divided by 3. And now we have to work this out. So, 20 plus 1 is 21. So we've got 21 fifths, subtract. Well, we've got here 6 plus 2, which is 8. And then we divide this by 3. And so we have 21 fifths subtract 8 thirds. And at this point we need to combine the fractions. And we can rewrite these. So we've got a denominator of 15. Well, from 5 to 15 we multiply by 3. So 21 needs to be multiplied by 3 to give 63. And then we subtract 8 thirds. Well, if I've got a denominator of 15, 3 to 15 I multiply by 5. So 8 multiplied by 5 is 40. So I need to work out 63 over 15, subtract 40 over 15. And if I work that out, 63 subtract 40 that's 
So we've got 23 over 15. 15 goes into 23 exactly once. And what's left over, we've got 8. So we've got one hole and 8 fifteenths. Question number four. At the end of 2017, the value of tomorrow's house was £220,000. The value of Tahim's house was £160,000. At the end of 2019, the value of tomorrow's house had decreased by 20%. The value of Tahrim's house had increased by 30%. At the end of 2019, whose house had the greater value? You must show how you get your answer. Well, if I take a look at Tamara's house, then what we need to do is first of all work out 20% of £220,000. We can first of all work out what 10% is. So 10% of 220,000, divide this by 10, we get 22,000. And so therefore, 20% of 220,000 pounds will be double this, 44 thousand pounds and if I'm decreasing by 20% that means I need to work out 220 thousand pounds subtract 44 thousand and it turns out we get 176 thousand pounds. Now, if I take a look at Rahim's house, his value is increasing by 30%. So, if I first of all work out what 10% of 160,000 is, I get 16 thousand and so 30% of 160,000 I need to multiply this by 3 to get 48,000 pounds and so therefore we have 160,000 pounds plus 48,000 pounds and it turns out the value of his house is 208,000 pounds so which one had the greater value? Rahim's house had the greater value Question number five. Rosie, Matilda and Ibrahim collect stickers. The number of stickers Rosie has to the number of stickers Matilda has to the number of stickers Ibrahim has is equal to 4 to 7 to 15. Ibrahim has 24 more stickers than Matilda. Ibrahim has more stickers than Rosie. And we have to find out how many more. So what I've done over here is create a bar model to represent this information. Now we are told that Ibrahim has 24 more stickers than Matilda, which means that these over here is all equal to 24. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which 
is equal to 24. So each part then is worth 24 divided by 8, which is 3. So we've got 3 for each of these parts. And what we can do is find out how many more i has than r and that will correspond to all this and this is equal to 24 plus another 9 which is equal to 33 so Ibrahim has 33 more stickers than Rosie. Question number six. The diagram shows a prism. The cross section of the prism is a right angled triangle. The base of the triangle has a length of five centimeters and the prism has a length of 25 centimeters. And the prism has a volume of 750 centimetres cubed. We have to work out the height of the prism. Well, what we can do is find out the cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area, that will equal 750, which is the total volume, divided by 25. And that is equal to 30 centimeters squared and so to find out the area of that triangle we've got a half times by the base times by the height and we know that this is equal to 30. If I multiply through by 2, we have 5h, which is equal to 60. h is equal to 12. So the height is 12 centimeters. Question number 7. The diagram shows a cube with edges of length x centimetres and a sphere of radius 3 centimetres. The surface area of the cube is equal to the surface area of the sphere. We have to show that x is equal to the square root of k pi, where k is an integer. And we are told that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So if I work out the surface area of the cube... that's equal to well each face is going to be x squared centimeters and if i multiply this by six then i've got all six faces the surface area of the sphere well i've got four pi times by the radius squared so I'll multiply by three squared 9 multiplied by 4 is 36 so here i get 36 pi now i know that the surface areas are equal so i've got 6x squared equals 36 pi and so dividing through by 6 x squared is equal to 6 pi and so x is equal to 6 pi square rooted k is equal to 6. Question number 8. We have to solve x squared equals 5x plus 24. First thing, rearrange so one side is equal to 0. So I've got x squared subtract 5x subtract 24 equals 0. If I now factorise, I have x 
minus 8 multiplied by x plus 3. This is equal to 0. So if x minus 8 is equal to 0, x is equal to 8. Or if x plus 3 is equal to 0, x is equal to negative 3. So these are the solutions to the quadratic. Question number 9. For part A, we have to write down the value of 7 to the power of 0. That's quite simply equal to 1. For part B, we have to find the value of 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 6 multiplied by 3 to the negative 6. Well, if I rewrite 3 as 3 to the power of 1 and then add the powers, I have 3 to the power of 1 plus 6 plus negative 6. So I have 3 to the power of 1, which is just equal to 3. Part C, I have to find the value of 2 to the power of negative 4. This is the same as working out 1 divided by 2 to the power of 4, which is the same as a sixteenth. And now for part D, we have to find the value of 27 to the power of a third. That's the same as working out the cube root of 27, which is equal to 3. Question number 10. The diagram shows a shape made from six identical squares. The total area of the shape is 5,406 centimetres squared. For part A, we have to find an estimate for the length of one side of each square. Give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six squares. And so for one square, the area of one square will equal 5,406 divided by 6, because we've got 6 squares. And if I work out this, well, 5,400 divided by 6 is 900, and then 5,406 will equal then 901. So the area of one square is equal to 901 centimetres squared. So what's the length? Well, the length, that will equal the square root of 901. And this is approximately equal to 30. the square root of 900, which is equal to 30. So approximately, the length is 30 centimetres. And now we have to explain whether the answer to part A is an overestimate or an underestimate. So it's an underestimate because the area has been rounded down. Question number 11. The diagram shows two rectangles A and B. And all measurements are in centimetres. The area of rectangle A is equal to the area of rectangle B. And we have to find an expression for Y in terms of W. What is the area of A? Well, the area of A will be 6 multiplied by 2W plus Y. The area of B will be given by 7W multiplied by 3Y plus 6. And we set these equal to each other. The area of A is equal to the area of B. Let's expand out. 12w plus 6y is equal to 21 
WY plus 42 W. If we gather all the W's on one side and everything that's not involving a W on the other side, we would have 6Y subtract 21 WY equals 42W subtract 12W which is equal to 30W. If we now factorise out a Y, we've got Y multiplied by 6 minus 21W equals 30W. And if I divide through by 6 minus 21W, we will end up with Y equals 30W divided by 6 minus 21W. And so the expression we require will simply be 30W over 6 minus 21W. Question number 12. The cumulative frequency table gives information about the heights in centimetres of 40 plants. And for part A on the grid, we have to draw a cumulative fre frequency graph for this information. So at zero, we'd have zero. And then at five, we would have had four. And then at 10, we would have had 11. And then at 15, we would have had 24. And then at 20, we would have had 34. And then at 25, we would have had 38. And then at 30, we would have had 40. So now let's join all these up. So something looking like this. And now for part B of the question, we have to use the graph to estimate to find an estimate for the median height of the plants. Now, for the median, well, we've got 40 in total. And if I draw a horizontal line across from 20 and then a vertical down line down from here, we end up with 14, as we see here. So an estimate for the median would be 14. Question number 13. Ted is trying to change 0.43 recurring to a fraction. Here is the start of his method. We've got x equals 0.43 and then he said 10x is equal to 4.34 and then 10x subtract x is equal to 4.34 recurring minus 0.43 recurring. We have to evaluate Ted's method so far. Well, he should have used 100x rather than 10x, and that's because two digits are recurring. Question number 14. Here is a shape with all measurements in centimetres, and the area of the shape is a centimetre squared. We have to show that a equals 2x squared plus 24x plus 46. Well, what we need to do is split the shape up. And if I split the shape up like this, then adding on the dimensions, here we've got x plus 11 take away the 4. So this is x plus 11 subtract 4, which would have been x plus 7. And what we can now do is calculate the two required areas. Here we've got x plus 1 multiplied by 4, so that's 4 multiplied by x plus 1. And here we have 2x plus 6 multiplied by x plus 7. And what we have to do is combine these together and show we end up with 2x squared plus 24x plus 46. So the area 
a that's equal to well we've got the 4 multiplied by the x plus 1 and then we add on to this 2x plus 6 multiplied by x plus 7 and we want to end up with the result here so we've got 4x plus 4 plus now here we've got 2x times by x which is 2x squared 2x times by 7 which is 14x and then 6 times by x which is 6x 6 times by 7 which is 42 we've got 2x squared and then 14x plus 6x plus another 4x that is 24x and then we've got 42 plus 4 which is 46 and that's the required area which we wanted to show question number 15 we have to show that 4x plus 3 over 2x plus 3 fifths can be written in the form ax plus b divided by cx where a b and c are integers to do this we can combine the fractions so we've got 5 multiplied by 4x plus 3 and then we add on 3 multiplied by 2x and then we divide by 2x multiplied by 5 so Five times by four x is twenty x. Five times by three is fifteen. Three times by two x is six x. Two x times by five is ten x. And then tidying all this up, twenty x plus six x is twenty six x. Then we add on 15 and then divide by 10x. So here is our required result. Question number 16. There are only three red counters and five yellow counters in a bag. Jude takes at random three counters from the bag. We have to work out the probability that he takes exactly one red counter. First of all, let's create a tree diagram to represent this information. Here are the branches of the tree diagram, nothing's filled in yet. Now what we want is exactly one red. Let's think about how we could do that. We could have one red followed by a yellow followed by another yellow. What we could also have is a yellow followed by another yellow. followed by a red or we could have a yellow followed by a red followed by a yellow so there's three different ways we could approach this so the probability that we have exactly one red that's equal to well we could have the probability of getting red then yellow and then another yellow so that is one way of approaching this or we could have the probability of getting a yellow, a yellow, and then a red. And then we could have the probability of getting a yellow, a red, and then a yellow. 
So there's three different ways of approaching this problem. And we need to take each of those into account. And so now let's calculate those probabilities. Now, the way we'll do this is as follows. So here, so far I've got eight counters in total. And if the first one's red, then here I've got three out of eight. And then the next one, there'll be seven remaining. And how many of them will be yellow? Well, that will be five. And then how many will be yellow again? Well, I'll have six. And then there'll be four over here. Let's add these probabilities on the tree diagram. So here I've got three eights, here I've got five eights, and then if I pick a yellow, I'd have seven, and then five, and here if I pick a yellow, then I'd have four out of seven, and then here I'd have three out of seven. And then here I'd have out of six, if I pick a red, that means I'll have three out of six. And then here, um, we'd have out of six. We would have, if I picked a yellow after this, would have four out of six. If I was to pick a yellow after this. So next is yellow, yellow, red. So that'll be five out of eight. Followed by another yellow, so that's four out of seven. Followed by a red, which is three out of six. Or I could have yellow, that's five out of eight. Followed by red, so that's three out of seven. And then I've got a yellow after that. So that's four out of six. So let's try to work all of this out. Well, let's see what we can cancel down over here. Well, I've got three over six, which simplifies to a half. And then I've got four out of eight, which simplifies to a half. So here I've got half times by five sevenths times by a half, so that's a quarter times by five sevenths. So that's five out of five out of twenty-eight. And then here what cancels out? Well, I'd have here the four and the eight, which cancel to give a half. And then I've got the three out of six, which cancels to give a half. So I've got five over seven times by a quarter. Again, we have five over 28. And then again over here, I've got the three and the six, which cancel to give a half. And then I've got the four over the eight, which gives a half. So I've got half times by half times by five sevenths. So that's five over 28. And so what I'll be left with is 15 over 28. Five plus five plus five is 15 over 28. So this is the probability of obtaining exactly one red. Question number 17. On the grid, we have to show by shading the region that satisfies all of these inequalities. 
So first of all, we'll do the x being less than 3. I have to draw the line, x equals 3, but used a dotted line. And the reason we used a dotted line is because of the inequality symbol shown. So that takes us up to here. So here I've got the line x equals 3. And then y equals 6 minus 3x. Well, it crosses at the point 6. It's got a gradient of negative 3, so it passes through here. So, working this out with our gradient of negative 3, that's our line. So I've got over here, y equals 6 minus 3x. And then I've got 2y plus 4 being less than x. Well, let's rearrange so we've got y equals I've got 2y being less than x subtract 4. And if I divide through by 2, I've got y being less than 1 half x subtract 2. So if I draw that, it crosses up minus 2 and it's got a gradient of a half. So gradient of a half looks like that. For every one we go up, we go across by two. So a gradient of a half. And if I extend that, we end up with this over here. Now, let's just add that line on. I've got 2 by plus 4 equals x. Now the shading part is where things get difficult. x is less than 3. So what I want over here is everything to the left. So if I do that, then I've got this over here. And then I want y being less than a half x minus 2. So that's everything below the line over here. And then I've got y being less than 6 minus 3x. So that's everything below the line over here. So, with those regions plotted, it would be a misconception to think this region is the required region. It's not. The region which satisfies all those will be this region over here, we'll call it R. So this is the required region. It satisfies all of those inequalities. Question number 18. Here is a trapezium ABCD. The area of the trapezium is 66 centimeters squared. The length of AB to the length of CD is in the ratio 2 to 3. We have to find the length of AB. Well, if I length this length here equal x, then using the scale factor, this will be 1.5x because it's in the ratio 2 to 3. Now, what we need to do here to work out the area of a trapezium is find out the height. So if I was to find the height of the trapezium over here, I've got 6 sine 30. Now sine 30 is just a half, so the height over here is equal to 3 because I've got 6 times by a half, which is 3. So how do I work out the area of a trapezium? 
I've got one half multiplied by the sum of the two parallel sides, x plus 1.5x, times by the height. And I know that the area here is equal to 66. Now I can divide first of all through by 3 to give 1 half, and then here I've got x plus 1.5x, so that's 2.5x. And that's equal to 66 divided by 3, which is 22. And if I multiply through by 2, I've got 2.5x equals 44. And if I multiply through by 2, I end up with 5x equals 88. And therefore, x is equal to 88 divided by Five. So, 88 divided by 5, that is the same as working out 2 times by 88 divided by 10, which is the same as, well, 88 times by times by 2 is 176 and I'm dividing that by 10 so here I end up with 17.6 for x so that's the length of AB 17.6 question number 19 we have to show that 8 plus root 12 over 5 root 3 can be written in the form a plus root 3 over b where a and b are integers So, for me to do this, first of all, can we simplify the root 12? Root 12 is the same as 4 times by 3 square rooted. So I've got 2 root 3 as what, what root 12 is. So this is the same as working out 8 plus 2 root 3 divided by 5 plus root 3. Now, what we need to do at this point is rationalize. So if I rationalize, well, first of all, I've got the 8 plus 2 root 3 over 5 plus root 3. And at this point, I need to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. The conjugate of the bottom will be 5 minus root 3 over 5 minus root 3. And we need to tidy all of this up. So let's work all of this out. 8 times by 5 is 40. 8 times by negative root 3. That's negative 8 root 3. And then I've got 2 root 3 times by 5, so that's going to be 10 root 3. And then I've got 2 root 3 times by negative root 3, so that's the same as negative 2 times by 3, which is negative 6. And on the bottom, I've got a difference of two squares. 5 times by 5 is 25. Root 3 times negative root 3, that's negative 3. So if I work all of this out, 40 minus 6 is 34. And then I've got negative 8 root 3 plus 10 root 3, so that's going to be 2 root 3 and 25 subtract 3 that's equal to 22 and the top and bottom can be divided by 2 at this point so I end up with I divide top and bottom by 2 I end up with 17 plus root 3 over 11 
So that is the required result. Question number 20. The diagram shows the graph of x squared plus y squared equals 30.25. That's what we see here. And we have to use the graph to find estimates for the solutions of the simultaneous equation x squared plus y squared equals 30.25 and y minus 2x equals 1. So with y minus 2x equals 1, I can rearrange this equation to say that y equals 2x plus 1. And I want to draw the line y equals 2x plus 1. It crosses at the point 1 and it's got a gradient of 2. So for every 1 I go across, I go 3 up. So that's got a gradient of 2. And then showing that over here. And then extending downwards. I end up with this as my line. So here is the line y equals 2x plus 1, which is what I needed to draw over here. And at this point, we can find out where it intercepts. So here, depending on how accurately I've drawn this line, I get an intercept over here at this value, which is negative 2.9, and the corresponding y. If I draw this as accurately as I can, I get negative 0.7. So here I get negative 4.7. And then here, find out what this point is. That's 2.1. And then going across, I've got 5.2. Going across, rather I've got 5.1 over here. So my solutions, I've got x equals negative 2.9, y equals negative 4.7, and I've also got the other solution here, x equals 2.1 and y equals 5.1. So those are my solutions. Question number 21. The functions f and g are such that f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1 for x being greater than 0 and g of x is equal to 4 over x squared for x being greater than 0. For part a we have to work out g of f of 1. Well first of all what is f of 1? f of 1 is equal to 3 multiplied by 1 squared plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. So when I come to work out g of f of 1, well, g of f of 1 is the same as working out g of 4. So if I work out what g of 4 is, I have 4 over, and then in brackets, 4 squared. So I have a quarter. So I end up with one quarter. 
And now for part B of the question. The function h is such that h is equal to f of g inversed. Find h of x. So first of all, let's find out what g, what f of g is. f of g, I need to replace, and I'll do this in a different colour, I need to replace the x with the function g. So if I do that, I have 3 multiplied by g. Now g is 4 over x squared. And then I add 1 to it. So this is the function f of g. And if I work this out, 16 multiplied by 3, that's 48. And then x squared squared is x squared. So here I've got 48 over x squared squared, which is x to the 4. And then I add on 1. So now I need to find the inverse of this function somehow. So first thing we'll do is we'll let y equal 48 over x to the 4 plus 1. And if I swap the x and y, I have x to the 4 equals 48. Well, if I swap the x and y, I've got x equals 48 over y to the 4 plus 1. Rearrange for y. So I've got 48 over y to the 4 equals x minus 1. So y to the 4 is equal to 48 over x minus 1. So y is equal to 48 over x minus 1. And then I find the fourth root of that. And so knowing what y is, I replace the y with the inverse of h. So the inverse of h is equal to the fourth root of 40 t8 over x minus 1. And that's our required inverse function. Question number 22. We have to find the coordinates of the turning point on the curve with equation y equals 9 plus 18x minus 3x squared. You must show all your working well. Because it says turning point, that suggests to us that we need to complete the square. So if I have y equals the result here. I'm just going to rewrite it as y equals negative 3x squared plus 18x plus 9. And if I factorize out a negative 3 from the x squared term and the x term, then I've got x squared and then here I've minus 6x. Negative 3 times by negative 6x gives positive 18x. And then I add on 9. Negative 3. And then here I've got x minus 3 all squared. Subtract the square of 3. Close big bracket. Add 9. So I've got negative 3. Then I've got x minus 3 all squared minus 9. Plus 9. So I've got negative 3 multiplied by x minus 3 all squared 
plus 27 plus 9. So I've got 36 subtract 3 multiplied by x minus 3 all squared. And so the coordinates of the turning point would have the y coordinate being 36 and the x coordinate being 3. So I've got 3, 36 as my coordinates of the turning point.